Hello, Nicholas Burling here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the chaos of my apartment again. I'm giving you a quick renovation update. You can see here my room is an absolute mess, but I'm making progress. So this is the bed platform that I've created. And I've got storage under here that leads all the way back to the closet, which you can also see up here. And I'm just really excited for all of this to come together. The platform still has a ways to go, but as soon as I can get that built, I can get all of this stuff around me out of the way. I can move things from my living room into my bedroom and free up a ton of space. So I'm really excited for that. Uh, it's not happening quickly enough, but it's happening. Progress is being made. Uh, I've just had quite a ridiculous week and I won't bore you with the details. I've had issues with my rental apartment. I've had issues with uh, transphobes online. What else is new? But I am doing pretty well, all things considered. Now for today's video, I want to talk about Laurel Hubbard. If you don't know who she is, she is a weightlifter and the first trans person to qualify for the Olympics. So why do I wanna talk about Laurel Hubbard today? Well, because transphobes tend to spend a lot of time telling us that trans people shouldn't compete in the Olympics or even in sports in general. I've done a video on this. If you wanna see a full video about trans people in sports, go watch that. Today, I just want to congratulate Laurel Hubbard on making it into the Olympics because that's a huge feat. She is the first trans person ever to compete in the Olympics. The reason it hasn't happened until now is because of very strict requirements on trans people getting into the Olympics. So she's done a pretty incredible thing. Now, I want to make this video because transphobes are going to say that this is unfair and that men are dominating women's sports. But since there's only been one trans person ever who's qualified for the Olympics, as of yet at least, it's kind of hard to say that trans women are dominating the field. And when people say men are dominating the field of women's sports, they're referring to trans women because obviously they are, they're hateful individuals and they wanna label trans women like me as men. I play sports, I play women's soccer. Again, I talk about that in my other video. However, I have never once encountered any issue with the fact that I'm trans. I used to play a very high level of soccer in the men's category. Then I got on hormones and now I'm barely able to keep up in sort of a mid-level. Now, trans people have been allowed in the Olympics since 2004, but it would indicate that they're not dominating the sport because in that entire time period since then, there hasn't been any trans athletes competing, or at least openly trans athletes. When you look at the number of people in society that are trans, it's about 0.6% as a conservative estimate. So you would expect that among all of the Olympic competitors, 0.6% would be trans. When you look at the restrictions that are in place for the Olympics, they are set a very high bar for trans people to enter the Olympics. So the fact that Hubbard has done this is absolutely incredible. Now, since those rules were put in place, we've had the 2016 and the 2018 Olympics take place. If you combine all of the athletes from those two Olympics, you wind up with 14,000 people. If we assume that 0.6% of these people are trans, again, as a conservative estimate, then it would follow that there should be about 84 trans competitors, or there should have been competing during those two Olympics. There were none. So trans women, not dominating the sport. Trans people in general, not dominating the Olympics. Now in those Olympics, 410 gold medals were handed out. You would expect then, again with this 0.6% figure, that three to four of those medalists would be trans. They weren't. So if you think that the Olympics are unfair because of trans people, you're sort of right. But not in the way that you might think. Trans people are not as likely to get into the Olympics or win the Olympics as compared to their cis rivals. So in this upcoming Olympics, 
I know that Hubbard is not the only person who is vying for a space and there are likely going to be more trans people in the Olympics and I think that's great. What we'll be able to tell from this is whether or not the Olympics are fair for trans people. Will the people who get in have a chance of meddling? And will we see a number of trans people in the Olympics that is roughly what you would expect based on the percentage of trans people that exist in society? I think we already know the answer to this. We know that trans people are not going to dominate the Olympics and that there will not be a number of trans people in the Olympics that's reflective of the population in society. But I want to bring this up because I think it's important to lay out what the concerns are that you might be hearing and explain why those concerns are not valid. So let me just reiterate my congratulations to Laurel Hubbard because it is an enormous feat getting into the Olympics for anyone, but especially for a trans person. So congratulations, I look forward to seeing you in competition. I hope that you see the results that you want to see and thank you for paving the way for other trans athletes.